Hey guys, my name is Big Tino and welcome back to From the Depths. And we are getting right back into it. We are going to try to take back this area that the Lightning Hoods took from us last time. I have retrofitted the Corny Gun a bit. Uh, it now includes three Sea Whiz guns, so uh, advanced cannons designed to shoot down missiles. Which, when paired with the Cornigon speed and its uh, anti-missile laser system, should do a pretty good job of taking on these Terrawats. We know that one-on-one, -on -one, the Terrawats no match for the Cornigon, but put the put three Terrawats and a Tachyon against the Cornigon, and it has kind of a hard time. I'm also including in this fleet a Warhorse, which is a, uh, well, it's the upgraded pack mule. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot more expensive. There's nothing really offensively capable about this thing, but it's just, it's a very large, very efficient fuel refinery that has lots of defensive countermeasures like laser defenses, shields, uh, smoke. It's got missile intercepting missiles, uh, all that good stuff. And in testing it, it takes a very long time to kill the thing, which is all that I really want out of a fuel refinery. So we're going to try to fight this fleet again. It looks like it is pretty much the same fleet that we faced last time. We've got three terawatts and a tachyon. Like before, I think I am going to take manual control over the Corny Gun. Uh, once again, I have forgotten to do anything to the Corny Gun that prevents it from hitting land. Although, uh, looking at it, I don't think there's anything I can really program to make the Corny Gun better about not hitting land, just because it, it doesn't turn that tightly. Uh, I think the best that I could do would be to uh, just make the entire bottom of the craft built out of rubber. I think that's probably about the best I could do. Um, all right, so as we can see, we now have these three lovely Sea Whiz guns. Uh, they are, well, they're pretty straightforward. They're flak firing uh, advanced cannons designed to shoot down missiles, and I've tested them only the slightest bit, so I honestly uh, am, am not sure how well they're going to do. But uh, yeah, let's let's get into this. Hopefully we can make this battle go by fairly quickly so that we can get right into fighting uh, the Lightning Hoods on their own turf, which would be lovely. Looks like we are firing at the Tachyon, although having a little bit of a hard time hitting it. There we go, a couple of good hits there. Tachyon releasing its missiles, as is the Terawatt there. Hopefully our Sea Whiz weapons will do a good job of shooting those down. Again, I am taking manual control of this thing. Yep, you can see our Sea Whiz cannons firing, doing a decent job shooting down those missiles when coupled with the laser defense systems. A couple of missiles getting through, but nothing too terrible. It looks like there's a big explosion somewhere. Might have been on the Tachyon. Our Sea Whiz cannons having just a field day shooting down those missiles, but again, there are a ton of them. And hopefully we can shoot down a bunch of them before they get to us. It does look like... I'm going to turn off this UI so we can see a bit better. Uh, it does look like some of them are going to get through just because that is such a missile spam. But I think we are going to survive this volley here. And yes, I am turning hard to the left so that the bane of the Cordingon existence, land, does not destroy it. Ah, this thing does need tighter turning. But honestly, there's there's not really a whole lot of room to add that. Uh, it's it's a pretty at this point I've added so many modifications to the Cornigon. There's not really a ton of room to add anything more. Uh, maybe I could add a second custom jet to the front, or better yet, to the back, in order to sort of balance out its thrust so that it has the same amount of turning thrust on the front as it does on the back and that'll help prevent that sliding motion that it makes a good bit when it's when it's turning but uh you know if if it works i'm i'm gonna leave it as it is because between the corny gun and the dark mantle uh, i have spent just an egregious amount of time just tinkering with little things on these ships and i i really want to move on um i want to move on from the lightning hoods uh, I want to be done fighting these guys. I want some ships that can just beat the Lightning Hoods reliably and then move on from them because I've spent longer fighting the Lightning Hoods than I have spent any other faction so far. And I think a change of pace sounds lovely. Now, somebody uh, has recommended a few things in, in the comments of a couple of videos, uh, one of which is a particle accelerator cannon-based submarine. 
uh, which fires EMP shells out of its out of its PAC, and I feel that would be lovely. I, I think that would be a, a wonderful design there. Looks like we are taking a couple of hits on our side there, but I don't think anything too drastic. We may have lost a bit of ammo there. Uh, those ammo caches are actually fairly small in this thing. I've, I've kept the ammo caches pretty small and compact and spread apart uh, so that when when they get hit, they, they look worse than they really are. Uh, looks like we are doing some good damage to the Tarawat there. I'm not sure how much we're hitting the Tachyon though. Um, I think I think the ship is focused on the Terawatt, uh, although <laughs> uh, actually no, it looks like we've been shooting the Tachyon more than we've been shooting the Terawatt. The Terawatt is still at 100% health. Uh, we are still taking some fire here. Yeah, I I do wish I had a Dark Mantle here to take on that Tachyon. Uh, but it looks like our missiles are getting some great hits there on that Tachyon, which is lovely. Uh, the Tachyon, I found, is kind of a vulnerable craft. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not nearly as hardy as the Hippotos, although the Hippotos, I think, um, doesn't deal quite as much just sort of concentrated damage, or it, it isn't as maneuverable as the Tachyon is. Um, so hopefully just a couple of hits will render that thing immobile. Because once we can focus all our fire on the Terrawatt, we shouldn't have too much trouble taking it down. Uh, another thing I've done on the Corny Gun is uh, work on its detection system some. I used a lot of what I learned on the Dark Mantle to uh, fiddle with its detection system so that hopefully it's able to do a bit better in terms of hitting very fast moving flyers, um, especially because it does have those rail guns, which, you know, really their, their purpose is to hit those fast moving uh, enemy ships. Um, looks like we may have damaged the Tachyon because it's flying away and not coming back. Uh... <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully that means we have we have damaged it enough to where it's not too much of a threat anymore. Looks like we have taken another hit here. We are sort of stabilized at around 70%, um, but every now and then uh, something seems to hit us and <laughs> set off that one little ammo uh, cache back there, uh, which I I've, I've checked before and that ammo cache is surrounded by heavy armor, so the explosion doesn't actually go through and damage anything else. Uh, it mostly just looks bad, but it's, it's not too bad itself. All right, yeah, looks like the Tachyon back there, I'll turn the UI back off. Looks like the Tachyon has uh, taken some pretty bad damage. I, I think it's, it's sort of nose diving at the moment or possibly turning straight upwards it's kind of hard to tell um i don't even see it on the map anymore i think it's it's way out there i'm going to instruct the cornigon to focus its fire on the terawatt and here come a bunch of missiles i'm worried because i yep we've we've actually lost the sea whiz cannon on that side uh, so it's it's really up to the lasers, which are not doing a great job. Looks like something big did detonate in our ship. Hopefully that's not going to do too much against us. I may need to I may need to add some extra laser shielding to the Seawiz cannons themselves because it looks like they're being taken out a little too easily by the enemy ships. Uh, that's taken us down to ninety four percent health. Um, which is not terrible, but it's it's not where I want us to be. Hopefully we can still pull a victory out of this, especially now that we've taken on the Tachyon. We've taken the Tachyon out of the fight. Um, hopefully focusing on the Terawatt will, uh, will let us take down some of their DPS. Especially since our left side is a lot less damaged, has several more cannons up and available including the Sea Whiz, which will be nice. There is also the one on the back, which was also damaged. So yeah, I am just going to need to do a, a bit of remodeling on those Sea Whiz, 
uh, cannons so that they they're not so easily destroyed. Um, I went for maneuverability this time. I went for uh, uh, allowing them a, a very large degree of fire, and so they're they're on these sort of ball mounts. So these are two axis turrets that are able to you know look up and down and turn in every dire direction. Uh, but that does mean they are a bit exposed. They're a bit vulnerable to enemy fire. Um, and so uh, while they did a great job protecting us against the enemy's original volleys, uh, <laughs> they didn't last long. Looks like we are back up to 96% health, though that is good. Um, we're not doing a ton of damage to these Terrots, which is weird, because normally, normally we shut down the Terrots pretty hard with the Corny God. Uh, it could be simply that there are two of them, and between the two of them next to each other, their laser defenses are able to sort of stack and do a whole lot against my own missiles. Uh, and it looks like, okay, well, our missiles are tracking on the dying Tachyon there, uh, which, you know, I'm okay with. If that, if that gets out of the fight, then we can actually bring the workhorse in, or the, the, the warhorse in. Uh, maybe I should have called it the workhorse. I don't know. Looks like that ammo cache is going again. Probably what's happening here is maybe four or five uh, ammo boxes are being rebuilt uh, before the actual armor protecting them is being rebuilt. And so they're just sort of detonating. Which, again, a bark worse than bite sort of situation. Let's, let's pause briefly. I do want to see... I do want to get over here to the Terawats and see just what it is that we are doing. It could be, uh, since I, I was only testing my detection system against enemy flyers, it could be, yeah, it, it looks like our ships are being a little too, I think our detection system is being a little bit too uh, sensitive here. We're getting, we're, we're leading it a little too much. And again, that's because I was testing it for flyers. I'm actually going to hook to the right here so that we don't run into that. I don't I don't have confidence in our ability to uh, turn left and not hit that mountain. So I may need to do some, some battlefield tweaking here just so we can hit those terawatts. That's not something that I had really thought about before uh, when I was tweaking this thing, is that the terawatts, while they are pretty quick, they are not nearly as fast as, as things like the Hippodos and the Tachyon, which is uh, what I made the Cornigon's uh, detection system more sensitive to. And so um, it, it looks like it's, it's actually missing a fair bit. As you can see, we haven't done damage in a little while, although we are turning at the moment. Uh, so I think what I'll do, after we are on a good broadside of the enemy here, it looks like we are getting a couple of good hits there now. Uh, some nice explosions, yeah, going on in the enemy. Um, I, I hate to do battlefield tweaking on the on detection systems just because, you know, in... Oh, there's that ammo cache again. In the design mode, um, you know, I am able to test it in a lot of different situations, and I could just totally screw it up. Uh, doing it here, but at the moment we're not doing a ton of damage to the enemy because we're not hitting them very well. So what I will do, well first, is continue turning. I hate this area. I hate this area so much because there are so many mountains. Uh, I'm going to turn our engines down just a bit here so that I can get a harder turn going. Looks like we have damaged one of the Tachyons a good bit which is nice. Um, as soon as we can drop one of them, I feel the other will be a bit easier to take care of. How's our fuel doing? Uh, we're at about half fuel, which is fine considering I think if we drop one more Tachyon, or not Tachyon, one more Terawatt, then the Warhorse will come in, and the Warhorse is going to keep our fuel full uh, as long as it's in the fight. And if we get low, I can just turn the block count of the battle up so that the Warhorse comes in earlier. Alright, we're making the turn. So once we straighten out some, I'm going to look and see. 
Yep, looks like there's that. So I think I think I may just need to relocate that ammo cache that's that's like hidden right there, because uh, it's just a little too vulnerable, um, and it's taking too many of my resources uh, to keep repairing it over and over and over, um, and it's not doing us any good if it's being blown up. So I'll need to relocate that, which which is a shame because this thing does require a good bit of ammo because of its missiles. But hopefully I can find another place. Maybe I can put something a little less volatile there. Uh, interestingly, in this game, fuel is not very uh, explosive, um, somewhat counterintuitively. Uh, whereas an ammo cache, if one box goes up, one box of ammo goes up, the entire cache is going to go up. Uh, you can blow up one box of fuel and it won't... It, it only slightly damage the box of fuel next to it, so you can't really get a... Uh, a chain reaction going like that, so I, I may uh, switch out some of the caches so that there's more fuel on the outside than there is ammo, but at the same time, fuel is also more valuable to us than ammo. Uh, the railguns honestly don't use that much ammo. They can continue firing for a long time on just what's loaded into their magazines. It's really only the missiles that require that much ammo. Uh, looks like the enemy missiles are scattered enough now to where we're not really taking any hits from them. Uh, not sure... so that Seawiz is actually repaired enough to fire, although I'm not sure how accurate it's going to be with its barrel so badly damaged. Um, it looks like one of the Terawatts is heading for the mountain there, which it would be nice if it crashed into it for once. Uh, it looks like we've got that one down to 93%. Yeah, let me do just a little tweaking on this. Um, I may make this interesting. So I, I thought I had made a little... Uh, maybe I didn't save my adjustments here. and Maybe that's why we're missing. Um, I'm not going to make it quite as sensitive as the Dark Mantle because it, it doesn't need to be. Uh, but I will make it a little more sensitive. Um, ooh, coming close there. <laughs> this isn't a problem for regular ships. Let's cut the engines. We're going to take a little damage from the land there, and by a little, I mean a massive cascading explosion through the side of our ship. I do feel collision damage is a little extreme in this game, um, but at this point, I might be biased. I suppose we are going very fast, and the whole force equals mass times acceleration thing is pretty brutal when you're a ship this massive that's going you know 90 meters a second hopefully that didn't just completely ruin us looks like we are still at 97 percent <laughs> probably that's that ammo cache going up there uh which yeah definitely need to be gonna definitely gonna need rather to move that all right yeah I think, again, that was a more impressive-looking explosion than it was actually impactful. But yeah, we're getting some chop here just because of that collision. Again, this game doesn't handle collisions very well. And there we go. Chop's gone. We can turn the engines back to full. Yeah, the, those those terawatts have have particle cannons, um, but they don't seem to be doing a whole lot to us. Looks like we are getting some nice explosions on the enemy terawatt there. Uh, what I'd like to do, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I have the opportunity to, is to get as close to that thing as possible, um, because since it's using lasers and missiles, it doesn't really matter. Uh, its range doesn't really matter in terms of its damage. But if we can get right up next to that thing then uh, we can really hammer into it with our broadside, which would be lovely. Let's see the damage. Yeah, it looks like we're getting a whole lot of hits on it now. Um, you can see just tons of little explosions going off on this thing. And hopefully this little pass will get us a good bit of damage in on it. Our missile's still doing a good job there. Let's pause briefly so that I can kind of watch from the other ship's perspective. Yeah, lots of lots of good hits there from our railguns. 
A um, couple being deflected by the uh, shields there, but uh, those uh, heat shells are doing a good bit of damage. And of course our missiles are doing a lot too. I think now that we've we've taken out their laser, laser missile defense system, which is never something that I can say. Oh man, there's just... <laughs> the strait we're fighting in is too narrow. <laughs> I cannot... Uh, I can't maneuver like this. Um, yeah, I think... <laughs> I think after the uh, after the lightning hoods are taken care of, the Cornigon is something that that is going to be retired, um, because it's just I've <laughs> it's sort of a victim of its own success. Honestly, it's able to go so fast um, while still just being a watercraft uh, that it it covers too much ground. Whereas you know. A mountain isn't really a problem for an aircraft. You just go over it. Uh, but this thing, it goes at the speed of a, of a pretty fast aircraft um, while still... There goes that ammo cache again. While still, uh, you know, suffering from things like terrain collision. Yeah, we've got that slow-mo explosion there, and it's, it's going to do maybe 1% damage to us. Um... More tweaks for the corny gun. I think we are at uh, version 58 or something at this point. In terms of the corny gun. Um, the lightning hoods have been very strange to fight on this highest difficulty because they... Oh, they're such precision craft. Uh, like, they're not... There's nothing brute force about them. They're precision, and you kind of have to fight precision with precision... Uh, weapons and um, that's just not that's very difficult that takes a lot of tweaking okay so right now we've been just sort of driving in circles shooting terawatts for a little bit while uh, the same ammo cache keeps getting blown up over and over uh, I'm going to cut out a bit until something a bit more interesting happens so I'll be back at that point okay so uh, <laughs> kind of a, a derp bit there after I cut, well, a little while after I cut, I uh, destroyed one of the Terrorots pretty handily, um, and then uh, one of them ran aground, and then we ran aground on the opposite side of a mountain from each other, and it was really, really laggy, and we could no longer get to each other to fight. So I ended the battle, which uh, if you haven't damaged each other in long enough, you can end the battle without taking any losses. So that's what I did, and I let them get out of the mountain. I moved myself out of the mountain, and now we're back to it. So I, I, did, uh, I did manage to get a little bit of fuel, so we were not going to shut down uh, immediately. But um, one of their terawatts is at 77%, and the other is at 94%. So, yeah, that was really derpy. I, I wish I could have shown some of it, but with, with two giant ships hitting mountains, the, the lag from the collision gave me a solid, like, maybe one frame per second. So uh, I just decided to scrap all of it. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's do this, and I'm going to sit stationary here, um, so that we're not wasting fuel by moving around because we don't really need to be moving around. Looks like all of our cannons are, well, they're coming in for some pretty good hits here. I feel we are just gonna sort of tear this thing apart now. Yeah, lots of lots of good missile hits there. Lots of railgun hits there. Um, it's already sinking, essentially. Uh, let's see how our Sea Whiz weapons do. Uh, hopefully they're loaded, because they did just get repaired. There they go, firing. Yeah, they're doing... Uh, okay, so it's, it's kind of hard to tell there, because they are um, sort of all over the place. Uh, and, you know, there are lots of explosions going on. But, uh, yeah, I'd say that was pretty good. Um... I'm probably going to continue tinkering with them. I found, honestly, that a, a somewhat slower firing uh, Sea Whiz is better 
Um, just so you can get uh, like a higher gauge shell with, with more flak there and you damage more missiles. Uh, but it's something I'll need to play around with. Right now, it's, you know, I mean, the Terawatt's Missile Volley is is actually pretty terrifying. Um, ow. Last happened at least once. Um, and so the fact that we are able to just sort of withstand it now is is nice. Uh, so if I need to, I'll tinker with it more. But, you know, as as with all things in this game, I don't feel the particular need to, to do it perfectly. Um, you seem to be sinking. We seem to be sinking. Why are we sinking? Um, I don't know why we were, but we're not anymore. Could have something to do with the fact that we we are not moving. Um, this ship normally doesn't stay stationary, so who knows? And yeah, I'd I'd say that thing is dead in the water. In fact, I'm gonna turn off our weapons. And I don't feel bad in the slightest going and capturing this thing, assuming it survives this missile volley, which it may well not. Okay, it survived the missile volley. So I'm going to cut this part out because, again, I don't like showing the whole swimming to a ship and then carving my way to its AI. Uh, but we'll come back when we fight the final Terrawatt. Hey guys, I'd like to apologize for the very sudden cut uh, that has happened here. I'm recording this the day after that I recorded the first part of this episode. Uh, that would be Thursday, so uh, today is, is Friday. Uh, the reason for this cut is that while I was towards the end of a 25-minute clip in which we were finally invading the Lightning Foot's territory, uh, some ice fell onto a power line just outside my apartment complex and knocked, knocked out the power. So I lost both a good 25-minute clip of footage and also uh, the save file in which we won that battle, which was disappointing. Thankfully, I did get to save it after the first battle that you witnessed there. Uh, I believe I cut before the end of that battle. Nothing much else really happened. I uh, blew up the last Terawatt very easily. Uh, it, it, um, it actually demonstrated the firepower of the Cordigon very well. Uh, and yeah, so again, I apologize, uh, but for you guys, at least you will not be missing that battle because I'm going to have to do it over again. Uh, but you know, these things happen. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll get back into it this weekend. I will have a good bit of time to record this weekend. So I'm, I'm hoping to get, uh, some recording done in advance again, and that would be lovely. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.